Okay, so today we're going to be working on the Chapter 5 in-class review. So, for these first problems, we have to classify the triangle. In this first triangle, none of the angles, none of the angles are the same. So, we classify by the angle, and then we're going to classify by the sides. So, since none of the angles are the same, the sides won't be the same, this is going to be scalene. And now I can say that since every angle is less than 90 degrees, this will be acute. So it's scalene and acute. For the second one, I know these two sides are the same, which meant these two angles are the same. So this one is different, so it's going to be isosceles. And since, again, all of them are less than 90, it'll be acute. So isosceles and acute. For number two, just make sure you understand all the different ways you can prove triangles congruent. These are all the ways. The ones we cannot use are angle, 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 because I can have two triangles with the same angles, but are just different sizes. And the other one that we cannot use is side, side, angle. And that's because for this situation, we can come up with two different triangles using side, side, angle with the examples that we posted in class. All right, now for this next one, are the triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F congruent? Well, the quickest way to see if they're congruent is to see if any of the sides match lengthwise. We're going to go with side, side, side on this and use the distance formula. So let's first start with finding AB. So if I find the length from A to B, I will use the distance formula, and this becomes the square root of 4 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 3 squared, which gives me the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared 5 minus 3, 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is going to be the square root of 8. You can leave it as the square root of 8 right now. You don't need to simplify it, only because we're just comparing side lengths. Continuing on, now we're going to find the next side. We can go from B to C or A to C. So let's go ahead and just do A to C. So from A to C, I'm going to get 6 minus 2 squared plus... 10 minus 3 squared. Working this out, which comes out to be the square root of 8. So, so far this matches that. Now let's find, since I did A to C, let's find D to F. D to F becomes the square root of 8 minus 4 squared plus 11 minus 4 squared, which becomes the square root of 8 minus 4 is 4, square that you get 16. 11 minus 4 is 7, square that you get 49. So the square root of 16 plus 49, which is the square root of 65. So far, it's matching. Now let's find the last one, from E to F. So this ends up being 8 minus 6 squared plus 11 minus 6 squared. So this becomes 2 squared, which is 4, and then 5 squared, which is 25. So 2 squared, 4, plus the 25 gives me a square root of 29, and look, it matches. So are these two triangles congruent? Yes. If at any time here or here, now, while you're doing these over here, it doesn't match one of the other sides. You can stop and it's not congruent. Okay? Okay, let's move on to number four. And on number four, we have to find X. So for these, what we need to do is we need to see if there's any relationships with the triangles as far as congruence. So in this one, if these two are congruent right here and right there, and that's 60 degrees, then each of these have to be 60 as well. 
So I end up with an equilateral triangle. So that means all my sides are congruent. So I could say 2x plus 4 will equal this 3x minus 8. Solving for x, I get x equals 12. Okay, for part B, since this is 122, I can find this one. So 180 minus 122 gives me 58. And now, since this is an isosceles triangle, I know that will be the same right in there. The key, though, is we're trying to get this x. And this x will be 30 plus whatever this angle is in here. Well, if this is 58, just like over here, I could say 180 minus the 58. I'll have 122. So 30 plus 122 will be what that x is because the exterior equals the sum of these two remote interior angles. So I end up with 152 as the value of x. All right, for part C, I'm looking for this x value right in here. If this is 35, take a look. I'm told that these two are parallel, so that means that'll be 35 in there. And these are this is an isosceles triangle, so that'll be 35 as well. So x will be whatever this angle is in here plus the 35. So let's find what this angle will be. I know that the triangle has to be 180, and each of these is 35. So minus 35 minus another 35, so that's 70. So that'll be 110 right in there. So x will be 110 plus the 35. x will end up being 145 de degrees. Again, since it's isosceles, this is 35, that's 35. Since they're parallel, that's 35 as well. So then what was left for me to do was to find this missing angle in the triangle and then add it to this 35. And that's what I did. All right, moving on to number five. In number five, we are given a lot of info, and we have to provide any additional statement and reason for that statement to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So we're told that angle five and angle six are congruent. Angles three and four. And then DE is congruent to FE. And then FG is congruent to DG. And then GE congruent to itself. Do I need anything else to show that triangles DEG and FEG are congruent? So this one right here and that one right there. I've got plenty of information. So I don't need no additional info needed. These two triangles are congruent. So triangle DEG is congruent to triangle FEG simply by side, side, side. This is congruent to itself by reflexive. So I've got this side, this side, and that side. I could have even said side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. Any of those would have worked. They gave me way more information than I needed. <coughs> All right, moving on to number six. So on number six, we need to find the value of x and or y. So for this first one, the exterior, that's the outside right here, is equal to the sum of the two remote interiors. So all I need to do is say x is equal to 15 plus the 35. x is equal to 50. So again, this exterior equals the sum of the two remote interiors. That's a theorem that we've been using and that we practiced. All right, moving on to number 7. I can solve for y right away because this is my straight angle right there. So y is going to be 180 minus the 57. So y will be 123. Now, I know that these three angles add up to be 180 in a triangle. So I could say 2x plus 13 plus 3x plus 
157 equals 180. That's one way of doing it. You can also say that since you know y, you could set it equal to the sum of these two. There's a second method. So there's more than one way to do this. So if I continue on with the way I chose, we'll say 5x plus adding 13 and 57, you get 70 equals 180. So 5x subtract 70 from each side equals 110. So x is going to be 26. So I've got x, I've got y, we're all set. Whoops, so right here, this should be x equals 22. So 110 divided by 5 is 22. Okay, so for number 8, we're going to use the exterior equals the sum of the two remote interiors. So here we end up with 9x plus 16 equals 90 plus the 5x minus 14. So 4x ends up equaling, subtract 16 from each side, 60. So x will be 15. Okay, moving on to the next page. So for number 9 now, we have this angle as being 2x minus 9 and this angle as 7x plus 13 and then 41 there. I can solve for y right away because this will be 90 degrees. So y will be 90 minus the 41, which will be 49. So I've gotten y. Now, I can do this a couple different ways. I could say 2x minus 9 plus the 7x plus 13 plus the 41. All of this equals 180. So I can use these three angles in the triangle add them up to be 180. So we'll go ahead and do that route. So 7x and the 2x, that's 9x. And then I'll get plus 45 equals the 180. So 9x equals 135. Divide each side by 9. x is going to be 15. All right, for number 10, we're given these two triangles. Right away from what I'm given, I know that the triangles are congruent by side angle side because I've got this angle congruent to this one, this side to this, and this side to that. You could have also said, oh, right away you know these two are congruent as well, so you could have said angle, side angle. There's more than one way to, show, to have shown that. But since I know the triangles are congruent, I could say 12y plus 3 equals 51. And in this case, I can go through and solve for y right away. So 12y equals 48. y is going to be 4. And now that I have done that, I can solve for x over here. Since this angle is congruent to that one, that's 63. So I know that 56 plus 63, and this will be x, will be 180. So x plus 56 plus 63, all of this equals 180. So x will end up being 180 minus 180 minus the 56 minus the 63, so x will be 61 degrees. All right, for number 11, we need to supply missing coordinates for each figure over here. Since this is at HK, that means this distance is H, and then I'm at zero. So this vertice here will be H comma zero. This vertice there will be zero comma zero. So those are my two answers. On the next one, we have this being the same distance as that, because I'm told they're congruent. This one right here being congruent to that, so DO and FO, and then the other one, GF, and this point right here, ED, are congruent. So these two triangles end up being congruent by side, 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 which helps me out a lot because now I know that the distances will be the same. This vertex is at zero, zero. This vertex will be the same distance here on each side, so this will be negative 2H comma zero. And then this vertex right here will be the same 
as that one. It'll co correspond to that one. So that'll be positive 2 this time and then positive 4k. So those are the coordinates for this. Okay, for number 12, can you prove that these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side? Well, with the given info, yes, because you know that this will be congruent to itself by reflexive. So JH congruent to JH by reflexive. So yes, by side, side, side. For number 13, we have a proof and that we are first told that AB is congruent to AC. Angle BAD is congruent to angle C, oops, BAD, let's fix that. Angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. And I have to prove that this segment is congruent to that segment, BD congruent to CD. Well, the first step is to see if I could show that these two triangles are congruent. So let's make our t-chart with statements and reasons, put in our givens, so AB <coughs> congruent to AC and angle BAD congruent to angle CAD. These are our givens. I know right away that AD will be congruent to itself by reflexive, by the reflexive property. So since I know that AD is congruent to itself, I've got this triangle that has this side, this angle, and that side congruent to those corresponding ones on the other triangle, so for triangle BAD and CAD, so the triangles are congruent. So triangle BAD is congruent to triangle CAD by side, angle, side. This side, this angle that's included, and then this, so this side, the angle that's included, and then that side. So my triangles are congruent, and now that they're congruent, everything about them will be congruent. So that means BD will be congruent to CD by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, for number 14, here's what we are given, and we've got to prove that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. So this one here on the inside congruent to that one. Well, let's look at what we can do. If I'm told that XY is congruent to YZ, I know that angle 3 and angle 4 will be congruent by the isosceles triangle theorem. But angle 4 will be congruent to angle 5 because those are vertical angles. And since angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, transitive tells me that it will be congruent to angle 5. So let's go through and write down all those steps. So we've got our statements and our reasons. The first thing we're going to say is xy is congruent to xz. And this is our given. And because they're congruent, I can say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And this is the isosceles triangle theorem. Then I know that angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. This is by vertical angles, the vertical angles theorem. But take a look. These two are the same, right? So 3 will be congruent to 5. So angle 3 is congruent to angle 5, and that's straight by the transitive property. <coughs> 